Here on the beautiful campus of the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg is the Eagle Walk here at The Rock. They are rebuilding this program, but tradition lives on with the Eagle Walk. And yeah, these players ready to make a statement today. Can they shock the UAB Blazers? The defending conference champs are in town. Oh, what a day for some live Conference USA football on stadium, 72 degrees, a little bit breezy. Wind could play a factor as Southern Miss plays host to the UAB Blazers. With former Mr. Football USA, Max Brown, I'm Chris Hassel. Max, UAB looking for its fourth consecutive division championship. Bill Clark built this program in such a great way. Will Hall is looking to do the exact same thing at Southern Miss. Yeah, Will Hall was very complimentary of Bill Clark this week, saying, hey, he's done it the right way. That's on the back of defense. That's on the back of recruiting. And even though Will Hall's team's one in five, there's still belief in the air that there's better days to come. And on the UAB front, that belief's already shown up in the win column. That's a competitive group that's looking to bring home another Conference USA title. Yeah, Blazers looking to become the first team to get to 3-0 and in Conference USA play today. On the Southern Miss side, they're down to QB number four on the preseason depth chart. More on that in a moment. That just means they're going to have to rely even more on Frank Gore Jr. Frank Gore Jr., a name that's familiar to football fans, and it's not his pops getting some COVID eligibility loophole. No, this is uh, Frank <laughs> Gore Jr. right here. He really is a complete back in today's football era. He can run between the tackles like we're seeing there and get physical with you. Once he gets to the open field, he's an explosive back, too, and can make you miss an open field and in the wrinkle this year is in the passing game they'll look to get him involved when he can't when he can't run the, the rock as well as they would hope but what's the next best option it's, it's it's giving him the rock through the air so he really does it all for this offense and the key stat that southern miss fans are paying attention to when number three rushes for 100 yards in a game they're four and oh and uh, during his career so that's going to be a big factor in today's ball game yeah and when he doesn't they are winless. Frank Gore's second season here at Southern Miss. He's been over 100 yards from scrimmage in consecutive games. But going up against a really good defense that's firing on all cylinders, man, UAB just suffocated FAU last week. Nothing new on the Blazer front. That's what Bill Clark has built this program on, on tough defense right there. We're seeing Noah Wilder with the uh, the dragon skull right there, some Game of Thrones type stuff. And uh, pressure on the quarterback as well, creating havoc in the backfield. That's something they've done great in years past. Hadn't really done that as much this season until it finally showed up in the stat sheet last week against FAU. This is a defense that doesn't bring a ton of pressure. They're going to rely on their front four and lean on the back end. Uh, they have a bunch of safeties, nickels, and corners that have played a lot of football. And right there, we're seeing Dr Grayson Cash come up with a 100-yard INT return in the brand-new stadium. What a way to kick it off. And that's what turned the game around UAB. Able to coast home from there. 12 tackles for loss, eight sacks, four forced turnovers, and Alex Wright was named the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. But the last time UAB played here, they lost 37 to two, and UAB hasn't forgotten about that.
We don't need more three-run homers, right? We need more singles. We need more base hits. We need more guys not swinging at bad pitches. We just need everybody doing their job. Right now, man, we we set our bowling pins up and get them all just perfect. And right about the time we're about to roll the ball to knock them down, we slip the ball over our hand and throw it backwards. We're at that point where every play matters and we're learning how to sustain the mental energy over the course of a 70-snap football game to do our job every single play. And the average man can't do that, right? That's why average people are not successful. And we are training ourselves to not be average, to become successful. We've got to keep fixing things daily and driving this ship forward with the right direction and intentions. And I believe we're doing that. That's Will Hall in that SMTTT shirt. Southern Miss to the top. He's looking to take him back there. One and five start this season. He knew it would be difficult. Didn't know it would be this difficult with the season ending injuries to his top two quarterbacks. And up against it today as three score underdogs against UAB. All right, UAB Southern Miss fans, who has the most spirited fan base? Time for you to show your true team colors. Represent your school now. Just scan the QR code of the screen. You'll be directed to the Flow Code website to vote for your fan base. Glad to have you with us with Max Brown. I'm Chris Hassel. UAB is going to receive the kick. Southern Miss won the toss. They elected to defer to the second half. I mentioned it's a little breezy out there. Briggs Bourgeois had that thing blow off the tee. And he's kicking with the wind here to start this football game. Jermaine Brown Jr. and Starling Thomas deep to receive for the Blazers. Ball blew off the tee again, so they're going to have to have somebody hold it. Coach Will Hall's analogies were my uh, favorite part about prepping for this uh, this game. The bowling ball, the not needing to hit home runs and all that. We asked him where he gets that from. He said it's always just been part of his DNA. Really fun to talk to. And this one is eight yards deep in the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. And UAB will have Dylan Hopkins at quarterback. He's been really good this season. Not good the last time he was here, though. He played in the last meeting between these two teams right here on this field two years ago, a 37-2 defeat. Had a pick six in that game, one of two interceptions that he threw then. But that was then. This is now. Oh, how times have changed. Yeah, Dylan Hopkins, it's, he's the guy. It's his job. Coach Clark didn't shy away from that whatsoever. Last year, Chris, when we did a game together, Tyler Johnson was the starting quarterback. He's been around UAB parts forever. Well, now he's uh, he's been the backup. And Coach praised that relationship between the quarterbacks in terms of them helping each other. But right now, it's Dylan Hopkins' show, and I know this coaching staff is thinking that this is a game where he can really take another step. There was a flag and a penalty on Southern Miss for offside. So they will get the ball at the 30-yard line, will the UAB Blazers. Southern Miss has lost four straight games. UAB coming off a win against FAU. And right out of the backfield to begin this football game, Jermaine Brown Jr. making the catch and the yak as he tumbles into the Gatorade. On the, on the UAB front, you're going to have a one-two punch in the backfield. Jermaine Brown Jr. and Dwayne McBride. Coach was honest with us, said that said that uh, those guys are going to be neck and neck the whole week. But Bill Clark right here in his sixth season as UAB head coach, we talked about in the open what a job he's done building this program back after uh, the program goes away. Uh, now they're a mainstage in, uh, in Conference USA. Every week he calls it a championship week in Conference USA. And running room off left tackle for Jermaine Brown. So he catches one to start the game, runs it on the second play of the game, and it's a pickup of five yards. Brown's their one cut guy. He's the, the explosive, similar skill sets from these running backs. They're going to rotate him in, and right here we're seeing a uh, personnel change. Now bringing in another receiver and a different tight end. This is a UAB offense that has many ways to beat you. We're going to see the tight ends today, running backs. And they got a receiver in Trey Shopshire who's explosive as well. Back to the ground again at a shoestring tackle. That was Michael Pless who made the stop. It would have been a first down and then some. Instead, third down and three and a chance for the crowd to make some noise. And what an opportunity for Southern Miss right here. Get off the field, especially when you're the underdog. You find your way, third and four. 
These are the moments in this game. Can you find a way to get off the field? So far, they've been bringing an extra safety into the block, into the box, forcing Dylan Hopkins to make a make a throw with his arm. That's got to be the mentality. Make nine beat you. Opening drive of this football game. Here in a sun-splashed afternoon in Hattiesburg. Hopkins completes it. That'll be a first down and more for Brown, who's down the sideline. Cuts it close to the 20-yard line. Jermaine Brown, Jr., huge on this drive to start the game. Just an easy pitch and catch. Credit Dylan Hopkins for getting the ball out of his hand. You throw it short, you allow your playmakers to run for the ball. And Will Hall was honest with us on the Southern Miss front. He said, we need to hit singles. We don't need triples right there. You have Jay Stanley in the flat, ready to make a tackle. He doesn't make the tackle. Turns a five-yard gain into a big gain for UAB. 32-yard play. And it's first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Hopkins turns and hands. That's Dwayne McBride around the edge. And he powers forward for nine. Now you're seeing the big guy get involved. And credit this offensive line early. Sidney Wells at right tackle. Kadeem Telford at left tackle. They're getting on the edge of this Southern Miss defense in a hurry. Once you allow McBride, McBride to get going downhill, that's not a good sign. Ride. Really close to knocking that door wide open, according to this coaching staff. He's been close, just hasn't quite gotten it done in a game this season. They're looking for that game right here. McBride picks up the first down just outside the 10 yard line, so they might be able to pick up another one near the goal line. I do not believe it's going to be first and goal. I like the push there from Southern Miss, though. Defensive line wise, we've seen Sykes in the middle. Eric Kitchen's another name we're going to be talking about a lot today. The depth of that group over the course of this game will be tested. They are going to say first and goal from exactly the 10 yard line. If there's a strength on this Southern Miss team, it's definitely the defense. The Blazers have been pretty good in the red zone so far this season. They run away from the blitz. Good tackle by Cam Harrell. I like the call defensively. When you bring a blitz from the field, you're jetting the defensive line the other way, sliding them into the, the gap. It's a great call defensive coordinator wise. And Dwayne McBride, he's a big back. Let's uh, tackle him underneath. Good team effort there by Southern Miss. Harrell, a great return man as well. Had a 95-yard touchdown return earlier on this season. Had a 100-yard touchdown return last season. Take the handoff to McBride. End zone too tall. It was intended for Tyjon Palmer. A little hard to read those UAB numbers on the wide shots here from the booth as well in this sunshine and the white and the gold. The number that uh, is easy to read is 45, Josh Carr Jr. He's the pass rush guy for Southern Miss. Creighton pressure there. He plays that outside linebacker defensive end position for the Golden Eagles. Creighton pressure there goes a long way when you talk about red zone defense. Jermaine Brown back at the running back position as Samario Rudolph goes in motion. Third and goal, pressure coming. And should have been intercepted. It was Malik Shorts. And he would have had running room, but this Southern Miss defense bends but does not break. And the field goal unit is on. Another great pressure by this Southern Miss team. You bring the defensive end in tight, wrap the linebacker around, forces a young quarterback to make a bad decision. And Malik Shorts, like you said, he's the leader on this defense. But man, I think he'd want that one back, see if he could uh, pick up six points the other direction. Yeah, it looked a lot like the Grayson Cash pick six last week for UAB against FAU. It was in that same position as Matt Quinn just sneaks it inside the upright. And UAB's opening drive results in points. 3 nothing Blazers will see the Southern Miss offense for the first time next.
One play, 62-yard drive in the opening possession for UAB results in a 25-yard field goal. Join us next Saturday, 3 Eastern, for College Kickoff Live. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Will Blackman kicking off your college football coverage every Saturday on Stadium. Welcome to the game. Bill Clark would have liked to see his team punch it in the end zone, but a good opening drive. Really should be thanking his lucky stars that there was a drop in the end zone by Southern Miss that could have been taken back for six by Malik Shorts. Yeah, I view that as a win for Southern Miss, but man, we'll see how this game plays out. But that's the momentum play early on that you'd like to have and you need to have as the, the underdog in a game. UAB kicking into the wind. And the wind holds that one up a bit. Trouble and no return whatsoever. Wind really kept that up and a couple of Southern Miss players ran into each other. The up man, Antavius Willis, to bring that in. But they'll start from inside their own 20 yard line. Go through the quarterback timeline for this Southern Miss team this season. Trey Lowe, the third, started the first two games of the season, but was hurt against Grambling State, their only win. So then they go to Ty Keyes, gets his start against Troy. He gets injured at Rice. Both those guys done for the season. So they go to the guy who was fourth string to start this season, the true freshman walk on Jake Lang. And he starts under center and hands it off to Frank Gore Jr. to start the game. And a positive run for Gore to the 24-yard line, he gets seven. We talked about it in the open, getting Frank Gore involved in this game early will be key. That hasn't been something that's uh, in their five losses, hasn't been something they've been able to do in terms of getting the running back involved. Point of emphasis today. Point of emphasis today. Yeah, they would love to be able to run the football with some consistency. And that loss against Troy earlier this season, minus one rushing yards total for the game. Lang up to his tight end, and that's Cole Cavallo who makes the catch, and it should move the chains, it will. And it's throws like that that go a long way. Coach talked about it, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. You have some concerns at offensive line, but Jake Lang, I mean, I'm impressed. I know in my experience, when you get out of your four-string quarterback, I don't care who you are, that is, that is tough. The fact that he's out there battling a freshman walk-on, a guy that was not expecting to play, um, it hasn't been pretty game in and game out. Really on the field is a completed catch. The previous play is under review. But I've been impressed with 24 in terms of his ability to compete. Well, we uh, said hi to Jim Campbell, the replay official, before the game, and... Well, he wants in on the action. We'll see if uh, Cole Cavallo did make this catch for a first down. If they say incomplete, it'll be third down and three. It was a, a low throw. Cavallo going down to a knee. Looks clean. Yeah, it looks pretty good from there. And uh, for Lang, Max, I mean, this was a guy that wasn't even on the travel squad the first two road games of the season. That's how far down on the depth chart he was. He was an afterthought. That's what I'm saying. I look back on my college career, and who was our four-string quarterback at USC in 2016? We had good quarterback rooms there, but our four-string guy, man, he's not prepared to play. And so it speaks to, you know, these guys rallying for Will Hall and on this play, not a bad look. Uh, my fullback getting his hands under there. And uh, they were targeting Jason Brownlee, which that'll be a key factor in this game as well in terms of if they can get their big receiver involved. Coverage goes towards number one. That's going to open up for other guys like Cavillo there. And we have the call now from our referee, Scott Harden. After review, it has been determined the ruling on the field stands. Completed catch. First down. All right. Lang, you saw the, the numbers. He does have four interceptions in his two games this season. Three of those came in a loss at Rice. But they were in that game the whole way and uh, could have won that game. I, I thought he, despite those interceptions, Lang played well. They fake the end around. They hand it off, and Gore has running room, but there is a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage that came out right at the snap. Encouraging to see some holes opened up by that Southern Miss offensive line, even if this does come back.
Looks like it's going to go on UAB. Maybe they lined up offside. Offside. Defense, number 44. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, second down. Yeah, Moultrie jumped. Yeah, good job by the cadence there. And Chris, I like your, your point there in terms of two early runs, two holes. Good sign for this Southern Miss offensive line. It was a pickup of nine, and they go quick. Bill Clark watches him run the quarterback sneak for the second first down of this drive. And that matchup with the Southern Miss offensive line versus the UAB defensive line, skill-wise, UAB has the advantage. But size-wise, Southern Miss does. And, in, and in running right at them, not getting side to side like we saw the UAB offensive line do, Southern Miss's approach has got to be, hey, we're bigger than you. Let's run right at you. Now, UAB defense has speed. But they are small, especially compared to this Southern Miss offensive line. And around, that's Demarcus Jones. Took a couple of pops, picks up three. And those are the wrinkles of your Southern Miss you're going to see throughout this game. It's not just going to be Frank Gore Jr. The end around to Jones right there, finding ways to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. This is a receiver group that's solid from Southern Miss. They've obviously had struggles being on your four-string quarterback. The jet sweep game is another unique way to get the ball in the hands of, uh, of your skill. Methodically working on this drive. Southern Miss opening drive of the game after the UAB field goal. And Lang completes it for another first down. This one to Jason Brownlee. The motto this week, do the simple things right. So far, so good. Simple things and simple concepts as well. The first one we saw, a little curl flat concept. This one, his read is the same guy. It's the outside linebacker to the field. His eyes are in one spot. You're not asking your quarterback to do too much. Linebacker goes with Frank Gore into the flat. You have Brownlee, your best receiver, fill that void. Jones in motion again, and Frank Gore Gets about a yard and a half off left guard and tackle there. That's Alex Wright, the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week. I, I misspoke in the open, said Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Maybe a little foreshadowing there. <laughs> he looks the part for sure. And, and Coach was saying this week that, hey, Wright statistically had a big game last week, but he's been productive for this group all year long. He's a guy that demands double teams. And coming off the bus, 16 looks like a player. And uh, his play at this point, in this uh, in this season's really backing that up. Six, seven, two, seventy. More motion and right up the gut. Positive yardage to set up a third down and shorts as Chandler Pittman, and they can do a little bit of everything with him, does it all, including Wildcat. Wildcat, once again, those holes opening up. And if you're Southern Miss, interesting decision at this point in the game. Offensively, not sure how many times and how many drives you're going to have momentum your way. Do you approach this as a four down scenario, given where you're at on the field? Maybe do Frank Gore and the run play here, knowing that if he gets two yards, you'll come back on a fourth down as well. Like the thought process, though they are kicking with the win here in the first play fake. Wanted to go to Cavallo, but instead just tucks it, runs it, and picks up the first down. Chris, I guarantee the uh, Southern Miss offensive staff in the booth was screaming, hey, run, run it, run it, run it. He had that right away once he broke the pocket. But Jake Lang, great, great job. This is a quarterback play action offense. He gets outside the pocket, athletic guy, uses his legs. There's no one in the flat. Like I said, he probably had it a good two seconds before that. But hey, better late than never came into this game with minus 71 rushing yards. Of course, in college football, they count the sack yards. Not known for his feet, but picks up a big first down there on third as Frank Gore refuses to go down. Inside the 30-yard line, he picks up five more. We talked about Frank Gore's ability to impact this game. Coaches raved about his upbeat nature. It's not e always easy to do that in, ter in terms of when your team's struggling, but when you're the best player, it's on your shoulders to, to carry the load. That run signifies what Gore means to this team. Four carries, 23 yards on this opening drive for Southern Miss. And you go right back to him. This time doesn't get much. But again, setting him up in... Uh, Really manageable situations here on third down and short. It's Noah Wilder, 
See, he's the glue in the middle. Makes all the calls on defense, like the quarterback of the defense for UAB. Third and three, they need to get it inside the 25-yard line, close to the 24. Already the 12th play of this drive. And Lang looking to throw. Free pressure, and they're sacked out of field goal range. How about that? Antonio Moultrie had the offside penalty to start this drive, makes up for it in a big way there. Without a doubt, Moultrie's a guy doing big things for this UAB team, and right there, if you're Jake Lang, that's the learning point, right? Young quarterback, gotta find a way to get the ball in your hands, can't take that sack. It's awfully tough on quick game. UAB dials it up. That's what they do. They make opposing quarterbacks uncomfortable, get them outside of field goal range, and that's a win by the Blazer D. Yeah, just a killer, too. And now they'll try to play the field position game, but again, punting with the win. That one gonna sail into the end zone. So that's only gonna net 19 yards. And a little glimpse why Southern Miss has been close, but haven't been able to get through yet this season. Blaze the Dragon, he and the UAB band making the three-hour trip down here to Hattiesburg. UAB with a 3 nothing lead. Both teams have had it one time. Hey, during today's game, you can vote for the fan of the game. A choice of these three, just go to Twitter and hit up our stadium Twitter page, at Stadium Fan 1. Two little kids. I like those shades by Fan 3. Looking, looking sharp. Chris, we had a first. We did this segment two weeks ago, and uh, there was a two-time winner. We had, we had to uh, disqualify him for uh, week three. The guy was bringing it. He had the <laughs> FAU fire hat on and the jersey, the whole deal. After the Southern Miss punts, UAB has it back. And a good sure tackle there by Swayze Bozeman. First team Conference USA all name team. The guy that played very well last week. Good run through right there. Getting a hat on the hat, and we talked about it, Chris. In turn, I mean, points-wise, it doesn't show up, but through two drives, this is the start you want if you're Southern Miss. You just haven't been able to capitalize on those singles that uh, Coach Hall has been talking about. Yep, don't need that three-run homer, just need those singles, but 12 plays, and they get zero points. But another nice play, this time in the backfield from Josh Carr, Jr. Welcome yard of the play. It's the second time we've called Josh Carr Jr.'s his name. Crossing the face of this offensive line. And a good job holding the edge by Kitchen. And the rest of this Southern Miss defensive line. Playing with some energy, playing with activity. 
Sean Crawford also in on that stop. Third down and long for UAB. Third and 10 from the 20. And Dylan Hopkins incomplete. Boy, another dangerous pass. Cam Harrell tried to chase it down, but that was off the fingertips of another Southern Miss defender. And Hopkins has been a bit off the mark early. Yeah, it was tight man coverage at the top there. You had Rajay Johnson Sanders, a big physical receiver. He slipped out of his break, and you can see the two Southern Miss defensive backs right there. Another opportunity about a potential pick, but good sign Southern Miss uh, gets, off the, gets off the field. Three and out. Rayshon Mitchell, though, pounding sand. He's not happy he didn't come up with that. Really good kick into the wind. And a return here from Daquan Bailey Brown, who's still up. Close to midfield, nice return for Southern Miss and good field position as a late flag comes in from the other side of the field. The official who threw that flag was 50 yards away. And they have the, the flag sitting During at the return, midfield. Personal foul, blindside block, number 15, <laughs> 55, <laughs> correction. The foul's on 55. It's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down. It's one of those times where you I've guess. I've been there. <laughs> no, no, 55. Yeah. Well, that's a big penalty on Southern Miss. They were going to get it near midfield. Instead, march it 15 yards back. They will start at the 34-yard line. Second drive of the game. First time they had it, 12 plays, but didn't get any points out of it. Here is a penalty on the punt return, Devin Thomas. And it's just, uh, he just didn't need to. I mean, he was going out of bounds anyway. You get nothing out of that. No need, no need. And Coach Hall talked about it this week in terms of those penalties, those plays that are uncharacteristic, that are something they never practiced before, that's out of, out of character for certain guys, have a way of seeping up so far this year. That's an example of exactly what he's talking about. Southern Miss this season, 1-5 and five overall, 0-2 in Conference USA play. Their only win was here against Grambling State. Losses to South Alabama, Troy, Alabama, Rice, and UTEP. But those two Conference USA games, Rice and UTEP, they have been uh, for the taking. They just haven't taken it. Frank Gore 
Boy, that's another example of just making a little something out of nothing. He just doesn't give up. Frank Gore Jr., the son of the future Hall of Famer, Frank Gore. Mr. Durability. Dad played a long time in the league, and right there we're seeing that the impact that Frank Gore Jr. has, 2020, first year on campus. Made a nice splash onto the scene. He'll be uh, around for a while for the Golden Eagles. Still considered a freshman. Spin move there. Said, uh, my dad taught me a lot about carrying myself and being accountable and being a good teammate and respecting everyone. Goes a long way. Goes a long way. And what will go a long way is a third down conversion right here. And third and four is one thing, third and six a different ball game. This is where Frank Gore Jr., you might get involved in the, the pass catch game right there. We're seeing those 16 receptions. That's certainly where it'll, it'll show up on these third down plays. Get number three outside the backfield, taking some pressure off your quarterback. Right, he's second on the team in receptions and receiving yards. On third and six, pressure again. Lang had to throw it a little bit too early, and it was too high for Demarcus Jones. And the UAB defense forces a three and out. This is where we're seeing a little bit of the deficiency offensive line wise. You'll see Alex right in the bottom of your screen. Just a simple inside move and 16's all over the quarterback in a hurry. He beats Washington towards the inside and that's tough. Anytime it's a one on one matchup right there. That's why Wright demands a double team. But it also shows the concern Southern Miss has in terms of wanting to get the quarterbacks uh, the, the ball out of the quarterback's hands in a hurry. Mason Hunt to punt for the second time. And there was movement before the snap. Ball start, number 55, offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. And for both teams to start this game, you go under first drive, 10 plus plays. You respond with a three and out. So both of them are on the similar schedule, not able to get anything, or not able to build off the momentum from the first drive of the game. And that was uh, the exact uh, last thing you want for a bookend possession for Devin Thomas. Had that penalty on the punt return that brought him back 15 yards. Penalty there. And they almost got to that punt. High swirling kick that's going to bounce out of bounds just inside the 30 yard line. Uh, look how close they got to this. Mmm. Right there, almost picks it up off the foot, and they love this punter now, Hunt. It's kind of the sign of a team that's struggling a little bit when you're uh, one and five and you say your best player is the punter, but you gotta give credit where credit's due. But uh, right there, you almost wanna speed up the cadence a little bit, make sure it gets off your, uh, off your foot, but here we are. Let's see what this other Miss defense can do. Dylan Hopkins just two for five to start this game. Did have that 32-yarder to Brown. And now has a man wide open. Boy, a better pass, and that would have been a touchdown, but Trey Shopshire had to go down to get that one. And you see Dylan Hopkins say, hey, that's my bad, because yeah, that would have been six. Would have been six. Daniel, he falls down to safety from Southern Miss, and that leaves Shropshire wide open. He's that deep threat. He's the guy they want to single out on post routes right there. We're seeing a play. It took a little time to develop. That's where you would like the pass rush to show up. Can't always put that much pressure on your secondary, but Daniel just fell down. Shropshire takes advantage. 33-yard play. And to the ground they go. Eric Kitchen making the stop after a gain of one. Got Sykes there in the middle as, as well. He's Mr. Steady Eddie for this defensive line. They'll plug him in as the anchor in that three down front. The coaches said they, they want to push for him to have more production, though. He's been active, played some ball, but pushing to have more production and show up a little bit more uh, down in, down, down out. And it was Sykes there wearing that number three, just like Gore. Oh, safety blitz and an incompletion. That would have been a touchdown to Garrett Prince. Maybe that corner blitz from the near side 
caused a little bit of an overthrow. That's been their go-to pressure so far. Great call, Chris. You bring an outside linebacker from that side. When you're rotating there, that means you're going single high safety. UAB knows they have that. They go a seam route to try to attack that to their pass catching uh, tight end, Garrett Prince. And that's the trade-off. You're a defensive coordinator. That's why you're calling pressure. You say, hey, we might not be able to hold up in coverage, but we'll impact the quarterback either way. Last play of the first quarter. Third down and nine. Screen pass. McBride turns it upfield. Just short of the first down. Two yards shy. And the second quarter is going to start with a decision for J UAB. Jay Stanley showing up. Not easy to do against McBride. Come in there and force the tackle right there. But Stanley's letting him know. We're heading to the second quarter here at Southern Miss. UAB up three. Bill Clark going to do here to start the second quarter. Fourth down in two from the 34-yard line of Southern Mississippi. This was the third down play, which looked to be a first down play. But look at the tackle there right before the sticks from Jay Stanley. It's tough to stop that runaway train of Dwayne McBride. That That's not easy. That's not easy. No, credit him for coming in there and, and laying a hit. Good job by the linebacker unit. Force it inside. Allow your safeties to make a tackle. But like you said, fourth down. Blazer's going to go for it. They fake the handoff. Hopkins goes long. Has a man. Touchdown, Blazers. It's Garrett Prince. The fourth down call. Everyone's expecting run. You have Brown. You have uh, McBride in the backfield. But you also have Garrett Prince, the big time pass catching tight end. Coach said he loves Travis Kelsey, looking a little bit like Travis Kelsey right there. Just a simple corner out there, able to high low the corner, out leverage that defense, and get in for six. And a team high sixth receiving touchdown of the season for Prince. Extra point is good, and it's 10 0 UAB scoring on the first play of the second quarter. Dylan Hopkins waited for his man to come open. Perfect pass, and the Blazers are up 10.
bread and butter play action pass right here by UAB and Jay Stanley, the safety by, from Southern Miss to the top of the screen. He's the one that gets a step out of position. He's uh, got no run game responsibility to a run not to his side. He gets involved and Garrett Prince makes him pay on just a rollout corner route, especially with Garrett Prince. He's the name you're highlighting all week when you're prepping in terms of keep an eye out for him in the pass game. You get one step out of your gap, and Coach Hall talked about it this entire week. It's nothing groundbreaking. We're super close, but one step here, one step there. Ten guys doing their responsibility. One guy's just a, a, a step slow, and uh, UAB, a good team, makes him pay. Two big plays on that drive, the 34-yard touchdown to Prince and a 33-yard pass play to Trey Shropshire. Wind still blowing that ball off the tee. Wind coming across from left to right on your TV screen or your mobile device. Thanks for joining us here on Stadium with Max Brown. I'm Chris Hassel. UAB took the opening drive down, kicked the field goal. And they've added a touchdown here to start this second quarter. And they have a 10-0 lead. And Southern Miss is uh, in a hole once again. Coach Hall has talked about how pretty much every game other than the Alabama game, they've been in it at halftime. It's been a one-score game at halftime. And they've let it slip away in the second half. They can't afford to let this one get away here in the second quarter. Yeah, and to start the game, you sense the missed opportunity. Southern Miss in a, in, a, in a position to take command of this game. They're down 10, haven't been playing poorly, but this drive goes a long way in terms of uh, this game could go one or two directions. Their opening drive was 12 plays. They had it in field goal range, but a killing sack took them out of field goal range, and they had to punt it. Just the fourth pass of the game. And even though it was into double coverage, it was uh, on the mark, but like tipped that, away. It's intended for the tight end, Grayson Gunter. And you can tell what Will Hall's trying to do was the same action they called on that fourth down play where they had, su had success. And I'm sure Will Hall has a section in his playbook of plays that he knows Jake Lang is comfortable with, plays that he knows he can read, very simple reads. They go back to a play that had success early in that game. Had the running lane there a little bit there, though. So, man, uh, hindsight's 20-20. And Gunter hobbled off the field a bit, favoring one of his legs on second and 10. Lang too high and a big hit as well, intended for Brad Dennis, all of 5'11", 168, and he took a beating over the middle. Yeah, he's that solid, steady receiver. And I made reference to the fourth down play. Well, this was the exact play that Jason Brownlee caught his 10-yard chunking early on in the, in, in the ball game. You bring Gore from the backfield out into the flat. You allow Jake Lane to read one section of the area, have a receiver come from right to left. Brad Dennis, she got to put it on him there and uh, takes a lick uh, along the way. Will Hall calling the plays. The offensive mind, offensive coordinator at Tulane each of the last couple of seasons. And that's going to be offside. Surprised they didn't blow that play dead. Is there no flag? There's no flag. Will Hall's livid on the bottom of the screen. So I guess what the officials are going to say here is that he timed it perfectly and it just looked to the naked eye like he was offside. I was. But it looked like he was clearly, and usually 99% of the time they're going to call it, even if he does time it perfectly, which it looked like he did. I was about, about to yell free play. Obviously that wasn't the case. It, to, like you said, to the naked eye, that definitely looked like a, a penalty for the defense, but I guess they're giving him uh, the perfect timing. It was Alex Wright who had a couple of sacks last week. There's a flag flying on the punt, which is not a very good one. Bounces out at the 50-yard line. Flag of the play. And we've seen that before where sometimes on field goals you, it, or a punt, you time it perfectly and the refs will still Offside. call it. Number 28, defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, fourth down. So they will get to re-kick it. Fans here are probably saying, all right, you is that a makeup offside call? Yeah, exactly. Like the NBA uh, NBA makeup call when you, when, when you blow one. But yeah, if you're Southern Miss, so far in this game, if you're going to pull the upset here, you couldn't have penalties. Well, we've seen a little bit of that. You had to take advantage of every big play opportunity. You missed the, the pick six. And you can't make little mistakes as well. We saw the coverage missed assignment on the, uh, the, 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 the touchdown pass. 
to Garrett Prince. So, so far, those little things go a long way in this ball game. They came after it again, and this time they get there, and this is going to be six touchdown Blazers. And look who it is. It's Grayson Cash. Pick six last week against FAU, and a touchdown in this one. Right there, we see him throw up the number two as well. Chris, he knows exactly what you're talking about. Like you said, the pick six a week ago, and right here, he's lined up on the inside in the A-gap, uses his speed to get involved. Southern Miss doesn't get a hand on him, and he gets a hand on that football. Not only does he block it, he recovers it as well. What a play for Grayson Cash. Grayson Cash, his own offense as a strong safety and a special teams player. 100-yard pick six last week against FAU, and he blocks the punt with one hand, turns around, finds it, and dives on it for the touchdown. All Blazers up 17 zip. UAB has opened this thing up. The man in the middle there wearing number 12, Grayson Cash, with a block punt and recovered it for a touchdown at 17 0 here on Stadium. Download the app by just scan that QR code on your screen right now. Stadium, the only 24 7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. You can watch live games like this. Also, have a bunch of classic games, daily studio shows, tons of original programming on Stadium. Welcome to the game. Bill Clark had a defensive touchdown last week, special teams touchdown this week. Everything going well right now with a 17-0 lead on the road here at Southern Miss in a rivalry game. These two teams have uh, been playing a long time, 19th meeting. It's the most played game in Conference USA history, believe it or not. A little rivalry action. Two-sided, though. Or I guess I'd say one-sided uh, as of late. Yeah, UAB's won seven of the last nine meetings. But last time they played, 2019, right here on this field, Southern Miss won 37-2. Did not play last season. Game oh, was how canceled. times have changed, Chris. No kidding. Another look at the block punt right here. Pay attention to this A gap. You're going to have two UAB defenders right there. And Southern Miss just all decides to block the same exact guy. They didn't watch film last week. They didn't see a number 12 is the, the turnover guy. 
Grayson Cash coming up with a big time play. And that's a perfect example right there. You have two Golden Eagle hats on one UAB defender. Just a simple mix up right there. It's shown a little bit of this youth, especially in the Southern Miss team. They've, they've played a lot of youth offensive and defensively. Well, that'll ripple down to the special teams as well. Just a little miscommunication right there. Ends up being uh, seven points for the other team. And now the Southern Miss offense goes with the jet sweep. We'll end around to Jacarius Kasten. Kasten's another receiver for this Southern Miss team that's, that's, that's coming along. And those jet sweeps go a long way in terms of pressing a guy like Noah Wilder we're seeing right there. Force him to run sideline to sideline because the more that he's huffing and puffing, the more that he's having to worry about, That'll open things up for a Frank Gore Jr. That'll open things up and help things out for a younger uh, offensive line trying to find their way. Give him six yards, second down and four. Back to Frank Gore. In the running game, which has been pretty successful so far in this first half. They just have not converted on big plays when they've needed to. Had that opening drive, 12 plays, took it down the field inside the 30-yard line as Deshaun Richard as the running back there coming off, and now Gorian. And right here, they take uh, they take Lang off the field. They bring in their two backup offensive guards for the little Wildcat action. And it's Frank Gore taking the snap. Right into the teeth of that UAB defense, and I don't think he got it. Yard short. Golden Eagle players asking to run it again. Saying give us one more shot. Will Hall saying, guys, that was your shot. We're gonna punt it on fourth down here. A lot of pressure now on this uh, Southern Miss offense, which just um, is not uh, playing up to, up to snuff as of yet. Will Hall says, I mean, he made no bones about it. He says, it's the worst offense I've ever had. And he said, that's a, re it's a reflection on me. I'm not saying that about, you know, my players. I'm just, we just, we've had some injuries at the quarterback position. And uh, right now, it's a, it's a slow Back go. Back to the snap, UAB will take their first time out of the half. 30-second timeout. And he said, uh, look, if we take a step forward, will be bad because a step up from terrible is bad. So, I mean, we got a long way to go on offense. I respected the honesty. That was refreshing. So, so often you hear coach talk and, you know, guys trying to frame things in a certain way. Will Hall, there was no uh, no hiding the realities of where his football program is at. But even with the, the brutal honesty that he had, he did feel like they were close. And, and we're seeing that a little bit today in terms of guys are there to make some plays. Your quarterbacks had a couple good throws, but the ability to string it together consistently play in and play out is what that team needs to grow towards. Is that uh, West Georgia as the head coach after some time at West Alabama? He was in this building last year. Tulane came in here. He was the offensive coordinator. We had that game for you on stadium. And yep. he said everything everything's in place right now. The culture is great. He said we're recruiting our tails off, doing a great job on the recruiting trail. The offense is just uh, lacking at this point. No stranger to rebuilding programs either. Mm -hmm. catch the it's a fair catch by line. Starling Thomas. UAB will start from the 34-yard line. Will Hall has taken a lot from Nick Saban. His time at West Alabama, he was just a few miles down the road. A couple of his coaches were on the a Saban coaching staff, the strength coach, and safeties coach. And he said that they really try to emulate, as, as one would do, what Nick Saban has done. He said the biggest thing is how they practice during the week. That's not a bad blueprint to follow. But yeah, how they practice, and then, especially in today's age, just recruiting. Recruiting your tails off all year long. Southern Miss is the third best recruiting class so far this, uh, this year. Here comes the reverse, and there's a blocker out front. Samario Rudolph tripped up right before the sticks. Southern Miss got beat on a reverse last week. UAB says, hey, we're going to try our version of that. Hand it off to the running back, pitch it back to Rudolph, one of those other UAB receivers they like to get involved. Caught his first touchdown last week. Now getting involved in the uh, the run game a little bit there. His first running play as a blazer. Pick up of nine. 
A lot of options here on second and one. It's a handoff right up the middle, and McBride picks up the first down across midfield. You're seeing the power of, of Dwayne McBride right there. As of late for UAB, he's been carrying the majority of the load, but like we've talked about, you got Brown and McBride, and as this game wears on, we got 1030s or yeah, 1036 left in the second quarter. But as this game goes on, can UAB wear down this Southern Miss defensive line? How long can these Golden Eagles stay positive and continue to show up in the run game? That'll be uh, that'll be a big factor with the remaining two and a half quarters. That's Max Brown. I'm Chris Hassel. Appreciate you joining us here on Stadium. Live coverage of Conference USA football and Dwayne McBride to the 31-yard line. Picks up 18. Tom Sykes crosses face on the center. Will Reichert in there, washes him to the side. Dwayne McBride reads it off the hip, off the butt of that center, cuts it back. That A-gap's wide open. Big chunk yardage, you're not getting even touched until you're into the, into the third level. The Blazers wearing down these Golden Eagles. Still early here, second quarter. McBride hitting that hole hard. Cuts it to the middle. Now to the outside. Dwayne McBride into the end zone. 31-yard touchdown. If it worked, why not go right back to it? A run to the left side behind Raglan and Telfort. Dwayne McBride sticks his foot in the ground, gets to the second and third level of the Golden Eagle defense in a hurry. And once that man gets rolling, he's going to be hard to stop. Dwayne McBride, the powerful back, but showing a little bit of that explosiveness as well. 22 doing it all for the Blazers. Brian Vincent told us this week he's been at the door, ready to knock it down for a while. Hasn't come yet. But they were hoping for a big improvement this week. So far, eight carries, 72 yards, and that 31-yard touchdown run. UAB looking every bit like the team that's won this division three years in a row out to a 24 nothing start here at Southern Miss. The Campus Insiders is your place for the latest news and information in college football with Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Matt Fortuna giving insight on college football every Wednesday at 6 Eastern on Stadium. 
Well, it was 3-0 headed to the second quarter. And in the last five and a half minutes, Bill Clark's team has put it in the end zone three times. We'll show you how they did it in just a second. Talked at the, at the outset about the Southern Miss rebuild here and how they want to build the program just like Bill Clark did up the road at UAB. These schools separated by about three, uh, three hours, a couple hundred miles from here to UAB's campus. It's about three hours north and east of Interstate 20. And on this blustery day, to hold this one up. Kicking with the wind are the Blazers here in a very fruitful second quarter that has seen them reel off 21 straight in the blink of an eye, Max. Yeah, literally a blink of an eye. We were thinking it was going to be a little competitive game the rest of the way, but right here we're seeing the play action and the deadly combo the running game and Garrett Prince can be. Get, get past this Golden Eagle defense and uh, Hopkins making uh, making you pay. And right there, the special teams turnover. That uh, getting involved, Grayson Cash showing up once again for a big time touchdown from the special teams or defense last week, special teams this week. And now your big time running back, Dwayne McBride, wearing down this defense and getting in. Like you said, Chris, everything happened since the uh, 1452 mark. That's getting it done in a hurry. And uh, miscommunication there as Lang thought Jason Brownlee was going to cut that off for an out pattern, but Brownlee kept going straight. Yeah, that's a vertical read route right there. If corner sitting at eight yards, you feel like you can get on top. Brownlee's got every right to run past him. He's saying, man, I got this speed. I'm going to go do that. Lang on the other hand saying, I'm trying to get this ball out of my hands in a hurry. I got this, this defensive line on top of me this whole night. Like you said, miscommunication, little things right there that uh, add up for when, when a four-string quarterback's playing, the, playing in the game. Lang getting his second start. But this is really the third game he's been in control of. Was also in that Rice game. And that one was thrown up for grabs. Almost another big play made by Grayson Cash, who had that punt block and touchdown recovery. And something to keep your eye on. He took a shot there on that play. He's, he came up hobbling a little bit. Down by his knees. Me being a former quarterback, that always makes me cringe when I see that in terms of that knee right there. But Grayson Cash getting involved once again. Well, they're so thin at the quarterback position that they pulled a guy out of school, basically. Jake Smithhart. Had to make sure he had eligibility. Had to clear it, clear it with uh, compliance. Coach Hall said that we claimed him off waivers. Oh, a big hit there and a drop. Wasn't going anywhere anyway. Daquan Bailey Brown as Lang limps off the field. Now the backup quarterback is freshman T. Webb, who has played in a couple of games but hasn't thrown the ball yet. And he might be more talented than Jake Lang, but. Will Hall says Webb just hasn't practiced well, hasn't earned the playing time. They also have Jack Walker, who appeared in a game, took a quarterback sneak at the goal line recently, and Jake Smithhart. The punt is going to stop at about the 43-yard line punting into the wind so they didn't get a hop and this game has turned in a big way Southern Miss had some opportunities early on in this game opening drive of the game for UAB and third and goal did the Blazers and a bad pass from Dylan Hopkins should have been intercepted by Malik Shorts and he probably would have taken it all the way back for a pick six they had a mistake on offense as well. They were in field goal range on third down, and Lang took a big sack that took them out of field goal range. Yeah, and on back-to-back -back drives, that that went a, that went a long way. That pick, though, that's the one that really could have turned the tide because you returned that for pick six. Take a page out of Grayson uh, Grayson's book. We gone a long way. Little check down here. There was a man running free. If they wanted to, they could have. Probably gone up top for another big play, but Jermaine Brown Jr. has been effective in the passing game 
Already his fourth catch for 50 yards. And this staff was thinking that this was a game where Dylan Hopkins could take another step as we're seeing an injured player, Andrew Smith Jr. Their center left guard combo, he's able to get up. But what I was saying is they felt like this was an opportunity for, for Dylan Hopkins to, to take a next step. I mean, he, he is the guy, he is the starter, was bad a little bit there with Tyler Johnson, but you're facing an opponent that you have more talent than. This is a defense that you can get after. As this game progresses, we, they've been leaning heavy on the run game. Yes, he has the one uh, tight, the, the, the touchdown pass to, to Garrett Prince. That was easy, though. But as the game progresses, it's an opportunity for Hopkins to level up, to do some more pure progression, progression passes, because as this season goes on, the run game's not going to be as easy. The defense isn't going to be lights out every single week. They have to have nine playing for this uh, championship to follow suit. And a really tough schedule the rest of the way for UAB. They've called another timeout here. They've got Rice next week. Rice 1-0 in conference play with a win over these uh, Southern timeout. Mississippi uh, fellas. And then a bye week, which they can't wait to get in for the bye week. But then Louisiana Tech, Marshall, UTSA, and UTEP. Yeah, we mentioned Will Hall's honesty in terms of where his team's at in our coaches' calls this week. Well, UAB was honest with us, and they said, yeah, Chris, Max, we could use an open week. That's what they call it. I'm more of a bi-week guy myself, but uh, they're banged up, especially on defense, trying to find their way. Well, back in 2018, won that Conference USA Championship, and then the Boca Bowl, first ever bowl win for the program. They won a division title in 2019, lost in the championship game, then came back last year, won their third straight division title in their second Conference USA Championship in three years. And uh, certainly on their way, it appears, to getting into 3-0, and and they'd be the first team to get to 3-0 and in Conference USA play so far this season. Uh, a couple of teams later trying to join them in the division, UTSA 2-0, taking on Rice a little bit later, and UTEP 2-0, taking on Louisiana Tech. It's a fun stretch ahead, though, on the West. I mean, they all play each other. They're all going to be competitive. For those other teams, it starts today, and for UAB, it'll start in the weeks to come. Quincy McGee off the bench and in for at least this play on second down and short. And uh, everybody moved but the center. False start, number 61, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, that can happen sometimes when you're rolling new offensive line faces in there, a little mix-up with the Cades, but this is an offensive line for UAB. 118 combined starts. That's a group that's seen a lot. They like what they bring to the table. They're deep, too. They can roll in multiple uh, guys, especially on the interior of that offensive line. And Chris, we called the UAB game last year, prepping for this offensive line. Pretty sure it's the exact same names a year later. Mm -hmm. Looks like it might be a different result today. That was a game at Louisiana Tech they lost in overtime on Halloween. Wild game that was on stadium last year. Fun one. Hopkins completes it for the first down. DJ Jones making the reception. I like the arm strength there from Dylan Hopkins, too. Gets outside the pocket. TJ Jones working from left to right on a little over route. Those are the reads. Very easy for a quarterback. One to two to three on the over route. And Dylan Hopkins, we're seeing a glimpse of why these coaches love him. The arm strength on full display right there. And a big hole right up the middle. Easy running for Lucius Stanley. I like what Dylan Hopkins did right there. Lucius Southern Miss rolled the safety there. down to the boundary, to the short side of the field. He changes the run play to go away from where that pressure is coming. Defense is out leveraged. And Lucius Stanley, he's the third back. Another back they like, but right there, Dylan Hopkins, those are those little things we were, we were talking about. As he gets more comfortable, 
at this quarterback position, helping out his offensive line in the run game, getting him in the right play. Now up to 231 total yards of offense for UAB here in the first half. McBride had that 31-yard touchdown run the last drive. McBride, the ball carrier. Now we're seeing why Brian Vincent, the offensive coordinator, felt so good after practice on Thursday that he went out and got a Big Mac and a Diet <laughs> Coke before he talked. I him. wasn't sure if you were going to go there. Yeah, no, he was. You could tell. That's how you know an offensive coordinator is uh, liking his group when he's, yeah, man, I'll, I'll dip out a little bit, get his Big Mac. But no, he's he's doing a great job. And I got to admit, I followed his lead. When I got off the plane in New Orleans, <laughs> I said, you know what, that Mickey D's is looking pretty tasty. I want to go and make a stop there. He said, look, it was a great week of practice. Big Mac and Diet Coke guy went out and got it. Offense looking for more. Off the fingertips of Trey Shopshire. And the coverage from Natron Brooks. Hopkins giving him a shot down the field. Shopshire, their go-to deep ball guy. There's a little pressure in his face. Doesn't matter. That's not fun in the rib, lower hip area. Had a chance there, and I've been impressed with, with Shropshire. A year ago, it was Myron Mitchell and Austin Watkins were the go-to guys out wide for UAB. Shropshire has emerged in that role. He's a playmaker, and that deep threat. Every coach we talked to mentioned that about 11. Tried to give him a shot there. It's Hayes Maples on the pressure. Hopkins again, down the middle complete, and it's Shropshire. Tackled by Brooks. Move those sticks. Move those sticks on a little dig route. That's what you got to love about dig routes is if you don't get into the first window, window, you can wait to the second window. Allow that play to come open. Good job by that coaching staff. Trust in going back right to number 11 and the pressure right there from Southern Miss. They bring in linebacker pressure. Good job by the UAB offensive line and you sense a little bit of that Front seven from Southern Miss getting worn down. Updated numbers on UAB in the red zone as they reverse it to TJ Jones. And he runs into a brick wall. That was Malik Shorts who stood him up. Great recognition by Malik Shorts too. Not only the tackle, but coming down, screaming down into the box. He's seen this reverse before. That's hard to do in open space. That's two great tackles right there by the safety leader they love. CJ Jones uh, pulling a fast one, changing his number here. He was number 15 this season, but 16 out there today. And a good tackle there by Swayze Bozeman, using that strength to turn back Jermaine Brown, Jr. Three-yard game. They give him three, it'll be third and two for this UAB offense. Third and two, we've talked about Garrett Prince. Obviously, at the touchdown in this game. Haven't talked about his buddy Hayden Pittman. I'd look for both these tight ends to get involved if they I mean, the running game's obviously not a bad uh, equation here, but last time they were in this scenario, they go with the play action. Pay attention to the little tight end dump off position group they love. Hand up, big hole. And stumbling at the five was McBride. He was trying to make that touchdown cut and lost his footing, but he does pick up a first and goal at the five. That's a huge hole on the right side. Great job by Treehorn and Wells. Open it up there. They're saying, Max, we don't need to do the play action. We're running the rock too well. McBride is smelling the end zone once again. 10 carries, 81 yards for McBride. UAB has 113 rushing yards in this first half. It's a team that's been successful, even against a, a team like Georgia. They ran it for 127 in that game against Georgia. Some motion. A handoff and Shorts able to ride McBride down. McBride trying to say he was never down, but they do mark him down around the three. Once again, I like the recognition by Shorts. You have a jet sweep in Shropshire coming from left to right, right at Shorts. He's got a tough decision. He goes, do I stay with the jet sweep or do I stick back into the box, try to stop Dwayne McBride? He makes the right call. 
the question of whether or not he's down. I mean, you have Josh Carr right on, right below him. He's, his upper body was down for sure. Yeah. His feet, his legs weren't down. He didn't hit a knee or anything, I don't think, but his shoulder pads and helmet. Second and goal. Hopkins just throws it through the uprights. Almost hit a band member. And there's a flag. The defensive line got some heavy push. Wouldn't be surprised if the offensive line got some cloth. Holding, number 61, offense. 10 yard penalty, still first down. They get Matthew Treehern for that. It's actually second down. You see this left guard spot right here. So they're miss at times. Has been active on the defense line. Tosh Sykes, both in the run game right there. We're seeing the pass game. And then check out this band member. Look alive, man. Ooh, that's a good job. Yeah, you got uh, peripheral vision there. <laughs> The second and goal. Hopkins stepping up. Hey, look at Hopkins take the hit. Showing that agility there a little bit. Had Hayes Maples in open field. The all-conference player for Southern Miss. He breaks the pocket. Good job stepping up. It's what you always want to do as a quarterback right there. Gives him a little wiggle. He's trying to find the uh, trying to find the, the end zone and Bill Clark, that's a big reason why Dylan Hopkins is the guy. Is he has that added element, a little bit of quickness, a little bit of athleticism out there. In today's game, you need that in terms of throwing with accuracy and having enough mobility for plays like that. When they break down, you can make the defense play. Stepped out at the three. Third and goal. Hopkins rolls it left. He's going to take it and score it. You don't always see defensive coordinators do roll out to the left players of the right-handed quarterback, but that's exactly why Eric Kitchen, the Southern Miss defensive end, gets trapped in the inside. There's no one leveraging or containing it on the outside. That's an easy walk-in for Dylan Hopkins. Good drive right there. See, saw a little bit with his arm and the legs making this Golden Eagle defense pay late. Fourth touchdown of the quarter for UAB. And the extra point makes it 31 nothing. And a little reversal of what we saw two years ago, the last time these two teams played. And Bill Clark said, yeah, it was two years ago, but it's fresh in our minds. They were really looking forward to Southern Miss coming to UAB last season to try to get some revenge after losing here 37-2. They're opening up a can here in Hattiesburg. 31-0 as we take you back to that game in 2019. This was the only score of the game for UAB. Came on a safety. Other than that, all Southern Miss. Jack Abraham, the quarterback. Quez Watkins, who's now scoring touchdowns for the Eagles. Go up and get the thing. And Dylan Hopkins was the quarterback in that game through a pick six. He really struggled. A couple of interceptions. DQ Thomas ran that one back. And Southern Miss won 37 to 2. But these programs have gone in completely different directions since then. That was back when they were led by Jay Hobson, who resigned after the first game last season. They went through two different interim coaches last season, did these Eagles. And yep. now the fourth different head coach in 13 months, but this one uh, is going to be sticking around for a while. It really is remarkable, just the two different directions both these programs have gone gone through. It's two years. Not only have we had a pandemic, we've had to, uh, to manage, but like you said, Southern Miss had multiple coaches, UAB's got a championship under their belt, and going from a 37-2 to win to now struggling to uh, even stay competitive, it, uh, it speaks to the rebuild that's needed here for the Golden Eagles. Draw play to Gore. Under two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. 
for just joining us. UAB got the ball first, marched it down, kicked an opening game field goal, but that was the only scoring in the first quarter. Southern Miss had some opportunities and quite frankly, whiffed on them. Just like uh, Will Hall said in the soundbite we played for you before this game started, we get all the bowling pins set up perfectly. And we go back to, to roll that bowling ball and we basically just flat out fall on our face. Slip out of our hands, which I don't know if I've ever seen that, but love, love, the, love the, uh, the analogies. But yeah, the second quarter has been a different story. UAB has 172 yards going into this drive, and Southern Miss only had one. So that about sums up everything. Couple that with a special teams touchdown, and it's been been a rough go right there, though. We're seeing two uh, good first down runs by the Eagles, third and short right here. And Gore will have the first down, so clock stops at 1.21 to go here in the first half. Man, he does a good job of that, of taking on that first hit, sometimes even the second hit, always falling forward. It's hard to, to get all of them getting hobbled there. Unfortunately, that's not what you want to see if you're if you're Southern Miss, but he's taken on a, a lot of shots. Feels like every single time he's touched the ball, it's taken two or three Blazer defenders to get him down. His total yards is 58 from Southern Miss. They had uh, just about that on their opening drive of the game. So you take that out, and it's basically 275 to nothing. And the score is 31 to nothing. And the second down upcoming. This is where it gets it gets hard if you're Southern Miss. UAB is able to only rush three defenders and impact laying right there. We can see him hobbling and as a quarterback when you're having to face drop eight, eight members in the secondary try to pass against that. That's awfully tough and coupled with the fact that you're getting hit. It's a credit to this UAB defensive line too, ability to heat things up. You get the jet sweep. It's Chandler Pittman who loses yards. Give him one. Pittman ran that wildcat play a little bit earlier in the game. I love doing a bunch of different things with him. Clock stops with 49 seconds left. It's third down. Yeah, that time they'll get the offside penalty on Alex Wright. Offside, number 16, in the neutral zone, causing an offensive reaction. Five-yard penalty, third down. Playbook opens up in a big way from third and eight to now third and a long three, it looks like, and it's much more advantageous for Jake Lang. If UAB is going to drop eight and keep doing that, could dial up a drop play, take the ball out of your quarterback's hands and lean on this run game. You know, length through the air, just two for nine, 18 yards. With a true freshman walk on. Pass complete, Noah Wilder wrapping him up. It's Deshaun Richard. But well short of the first down. Let's see what Southern Miss does here with the clock ticking. Well short, UAB. Doesn't do the drop eight, they bring an extra blitzer, a little game on the inside, force Lang to get the ball out of his hands. And as for me, when I was a quarterback, I never liked having arrow routes when the running back, you know, just goes directly towards the flat. I always like swing routes better for that very reason. You catch the rock and the running back's back is to the defense. It's hard to make a move like that versus a swing route. Now your vision's downfield, you're able to make a guy miss, and a lot of defensive or a lot of offensive coordinators still go with that arrow route. That was always a little nuance for me as a quarterback. On third down was always front of mind for me. Well, insult and injury for Southern Miss. They're starting quarterback and running back hobbling into the locker room, and they were outscored 28-0 in the second quarter. A blocked punt for a touchdown in this game for UAB, and the Blazers are pouring it on. UAB looking to get to 3-0 in conference play and getting some payback against Southern Miss today.
Welcome into the Conference USA Halftime Report. I'm Cameron Smith alongside my guy, Stadium College football analyst Michael Felder. And we'll get you back out to UAB and Southern Miss in just a bit. But, Mike, we got to catch everybody up yes. on some big-time matchups happening today in college football earlier. Now, the huge matchup in the Big 12 was number 12 Oklahoma State and number 25 Texas. It was the Bijan Robinson show early on. Third quarter, Robinson finds a lane to the secondary, and he's in the win, excuse me, as he goes 38 yards to the house. His third score of the game, 24-13 Longhorns. But here come the Cowboys. Fourth quarter, OK State down eight, and that's Spencer Sanders hitting Brandon Plessley. Now, the two-point conversion was no good, and it's a two-point game. So OK State took the lead on a field goal. Could Texas respond? No, they don't. On fourth down, Casey Thompson decides to run. That doesn't work out. That's a turnover on downs. And now Texas still had a chance to come back in this game, but Thompson throws that pick to seal it. That's the first play that they had for their chance. And that is the ball game. It's the second straight week that Texas gives up a double digit lead late and loses 32 to 24. That is the final in Austin. OK, let's go over to the Big Ten. That's where number 10 Michigan State put their undefeated record on the line at Rutgers. Spartans down early, but their defense steps up. That's Cal Holiday picks, picking off Jake Tuttle. Holiday takes it to the house for that pick six and Michigan State goes on top seven to three. That was a close contest, but the Spartans pulled away late. Peyton Thorne finding Tyler Hunt wide open in the end zone. And number 10, Michigan State holds on for a 20 to 15 victory and moves on to 7 and 0 on the season. Don't sleep on Sparty. All right, don't sleep on stadium either because we have a college football double header today coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern. We are headed west to the Mountain West. That's where New Mexico hosts Mountain Division leaders Colorado State at 7 p.m. Eastern. OK, Mike, let's turn our attention to the game that everybody's watching right now for us on our network, and that's UAB yeah. and Southern Miss. And Mike, for you, what stood out in the first half with the Blazers? Well, I think their defense is getting right. I think, yeah. listen, we talked about it going into the football game. They're a team that wants to be led by that defense. Uh, a little bit of stumbles early, but now their defense is really kind of uh, solidifying what they're able to do. That's why you see that blank put up on the scoreboard. I think that's a big key for what they're able to do. And then offensively, I mean, yeah. we got fireworks for days, right? This isn't yeah. a 7 yeah. nothing game. It's 31 to nothing. They're finding ways to score the football. Yeah, 31 nothing in half, and the big play of the first half came from Grayson Cash. We turned in that pump block for the touchdown. What has he been doing just really all season for this team and, and so many different areas of the football field? Two huge, play, two, two huge plays, two games in a row, right? Remember, we think back to a week ago against FAU, 100-yard uh, interception yeah, return for yeah. a touchdown. Uh, this one, you get that pump block. Pump blocks are great. That's what you want. You look at him there, you've got this, you got a punter. He's a right-footed punter, but he wheels to his left. And then all of a sudden, what you end up with is an overload. They can't block it, and because they can't block it, he can get his hand in there, get a hand on the ball. And then the best part, when you make that turnover happen, now you get it into the end zone. Easy money, really good play. I love that out of them. That's what they're doing right now. And then you yeah. throw in, you know, what they're getting from McBride on the ground, yeah. what they're getting from Dylan Hopkins on the ground and through yeah. the air. Two yeah. touchdowns for him, right? This is a guy that scored one through the air to Trey Shropshire. This is an, another one on the ground. Didn't think he was going to get it, and he didn't get in the first time. But then, yeah. you know, if you, if first you don't succeed. Try, try again. Yeah. And that's what he was able to do. So they were able to get into the end zone and just put up, I mean, just remarkable numbers. for Yeah, <laughs> yeah. speaking on the ground for Southern Miss, Frank Gore Jr., 11 carries for only 40 yards. So it's been a struggle for that squad. All right, well, that does it for the Conference USA Halftime Report. For Michael Felder, I'm Cameron Smith. We'll get you back out to the second half in Hattiesburg between UAB and Southern Miss. Take care.
Here at halftime in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, a Conference USA West Division battle between Southern Miss and the three-time defending division champion UAB Blazers who have some company this season. Look at all those teams challenging the Blazers, including UTSA, 6-0 overall, knocking on the door of the AP Top 25. And the Roadrunners have that high-powered offense, Max. It starts on the offensive side of the football for them right there. We're seeing the deep passing attack. Quarterback Frank Harris going over the top to DeCorey and Clark. Uh, and they're no stranger to trickeration as well. Whatever it takes to get the offense going, it's a defense playing at a high clip, that run defense especially. The Roadrunners, uh, they're, they're, they're certainly a main stage in this conference, and he's also a main stage as well. Running back Sincere McCormick leading Conference USA in, in rushing, and uh, he's been around for quite some time. Um, they host 1-0 Rice in just a little bit. 6 o'clock Eastern time, they will kick off. Sincere McCormick averaging over 110 yards per game this season. UTEP might be the surprise so far of Conference USA. They're 2-0 in conference. They're 5-1 overall, Max, but have they been tested yet? That is the question, you know. Like you said, 5-1 overall, but these weeks, weeks ahead in Conference USA are going to uh, establish whether or not this is just a contender or is this a team that can really go out there and win the West Division right there. We're seeing the well-balanced offense and defense attack. Running back Ronald Watt, Jacob Cowing out wide, and this is a swarming defense as well. They lead Conference USA in both fewest points and total yards uh, allowed. Like we said, though, the weeks ahead will be a big challenge for this roster. Including tonight, host Louisiana Tech 9 Eastern. La Tech 1-0 in Conference USA play so far this season. So that's how the West looks now. How will the West be won? How will this one be won? Second half from Hattiesburg coming up.
Well, it was 3 nothing after one quarter, and now it's 31 nothing after one half. UAB outscored Southern Miss 28 nothing, four touchdowns in the second quarter. All right, fans, who's got the most spirited fan base? UAB or Southern Miss? Scan that QR code on the screen right now and uh, head on over to the Flow Code website. It'll direct you there, and you can vote for your fan base. We'll have the, the winner later on in the game. Chris Hassel with Max Brown, our first half highlights, and we start with the first play of the second quarter. This was a fourth and two for UAB. And this broke it open right here. UAB finds a way to get the ball in their hands of Garrett Prince, their exciting tight end, and they followed up with the block punt, Grayson Cash. Two weeks in a row, coming up with a touchdown. Last week was defensively, this week was on the special teams front. And right here, getting back to their bread and butter. Dwayne McBride wearing down this Golden Eagle defense. Escapes a little bit of horse collar there. He's able to get in for six. This is really where we started uh, feeling the, the momentum slip away entirely. And right here, we're seeing Hopkins step up in the pocket, break contain, get his legs involved. He followed up the very next play. Once again, break and contain, and an easy walk in for six. UAB, first quarter, a little bit of a fight there. Definitely competitive. Second quarter, it's been all Blazers. 275 total yards for UAB, just 62 for Southern Miss, and 44 of those came on the opening drive of the game. 31-0 here at halftime, just a couple minutes away from kicking things off for the second half. Southern Miss will get it.
Well, Angels and Airways getting us into the second half here. Still a great day to watch some football for these fans. <laughs> Show us your dance moves. About 70 degrees. Sun starting to go down a little bit behind the press box. Shadows growing. UAB is going to kick the ball off to start this second. Came in as a 17 point favorite in this game. And they're up 31 nothing. Stadium DJs pounding the techno music, trying to get some juice in this stadium for the second half. Those uh, ladies we saw are uh, we're, we're, we're feeling it. Trying to give some Golden Eagle mojo. So is the uh, strength staff on the sideline as well, jumping up and down. Kicking with the wind and to the 25 yard line we go to start the second half. Look at the two running backs in this game. Dwayne McBride on the left has a 31 yard touchdown run. And uh, Frank Gore Jr. Pretty good start on the opening drive, but he's been bottled up since then. McBride 83 yards, Gore 40 yards. Yeah, had a rush of nine, like you said, on that opening drive, and I think he followed up with another one of six or seven, and that's about half the rushing yards he had early on in this ball game. Skill-wise, very comparable, but uh, the surrounding casts around them certainly playing a large factor in terms of uh, who's been being more productive today. Since those 44 yards on the opening drive, 18 plays, 18 yards for Southern Miss. Just three completed passes so far. Right there, new QB as well. T. Webb getting in there and taking a lick on his first play. Yeah, Jake Lang was uh, limping into the locker room. Looks some kind of a lower extremity injury as we get the call here from Scott Hart. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number seven, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. T. Webb getting the start here in the second half. That was his first attempted pass of his career. Webb, a freshman, and there's the hit. Yeah, just putting too much into it. Tyler Taylor, it's okay, you jumped up. It's, it's all right maybe if you come down and make contact with him because you jump, but boy, he really leaned into that hit. Yeah, and with yeah, Southern Miss quarterback being down, Taylor's a guy who's been battling his own injury, ankle. Coaches like that he's getting back in the rotation, but right there would have been insult to injury in terms of the quarterback position. If you're trying to find an answer, T. Webb, you wonder how much of it is Jake Long's, Jake Lang's injury, excuse me, and trying to, you know, have an option for moving forward, or if it's, you know, trying to get your backup some reps in uh, real life football. Jason Brownlee, their leading wide receiver, just came off the field with an injury as well. That pass completed, but a good open field tackle by Troy Young, who gave Frank Gore no chance to come down with that and make anything happen. That's what I was trying to say, uh, the play just before half, when you swing your running back out there to the flat like they did right there. Frank Gore, he's facing downfield. He's able to catch it and wasn't able to do anything there with it. But at least with his momentum downfield, his vision downfield, he's able to potentially make a juke move. When you have your running backs back to the, 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 the field, like we saw at the end of the first half, awfully tough to do anything with the football. Oh, he fumbled the snap, still able to get the handoff, but it was Antonio Moultrie there really quickly. No gain on the play, third down and 11. I can say from experience as a young quarterback, when I was at SC my first year, even the littlest things like getting a snap from under center, when you're young, when you're new, when you've never played, the nerves are going a million miles an hour, things like that can be hard. You're seeing why now that uh, Lang might be getting the nod over Webb, little, little mistake like that, not being able to get the ball from center. They said he just hasn't practiced well, not well enough to earn the spot, even though he might have a little bit more talent than the walk-on Jake Lang. On third and 11, pocket collapses. Webb trying to stay alive, but unable to fight back to the line of scrimmage. And they do get the roughing the passer penalty first down, but that's it. He had Dejan Richard into the flat too, if he could get, it, get rid of the rock, but you're seeing the pressure right there from the UAB defense. We've talked about Alex Wright on that edge, being able to heat things up and moving forward for UAB, the ability to get pressure with four. That's something they've done in years past. If they can continue to do that, today's not a bad way to uh, get in rhythm. That uh, will certainly help things out moving forward. This is a really good punt. And a fair catch at the 15-yard line by Starling Thomas. Of course, in the first half, they had a punt blocked by Grayson Cash. 
for a touchdown. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage. We continue voting for our fan of the game over at Stadium on Twitter. I like number two, he's really bringing it with the hat. With that casual, relaxed vibe. He's here for a good time. We always give you a chance to vote for uh, uh, young kids. It, it seems like our voters like to go with the, the, the older people. We like adults over the kids, apparently. We're biased. Yeah, the youngster rocking the Jason Brownlee jersey, number one there. Supporting the squad. Going to have to have a repunt here because uh, there was an illegal procedure penalty on Southern Miss, so UAB, after the good punt, is going to make him re kick. This punt still pretty good. And a fair catch at the 23 yard line. Did you see that? A little taunting. Well, Starling Thomas tossed it to a Southern Miss player. And the Southern Miss player was like, I think it was Josh Carr Jr. He's like, what are you doing? I don't want this. He threw it back at him. I like the note call, though. See, it's definitely telling him what's up. Here you go. He's like, get out of here. It was Kalen Leonard. Don't throw it in my face. Move on to the next play. So first drive of the second half for the UAB offense. And there's a new quarterback in the game. Dylan Hopkins might sit out the rest of this half. It's uh, Tyler Johnston III, who has started uh, many a game for UAB throughout his career, but got bruised up in the Georgia game earlier this year. I haven't really seen anything from him since because Hopkins came in during that North Texas game and gave this team such a spark that Johnston, who's been a starter throughout his career, has been relegated to the backup role. And there was a big hole off right guard, and Dwayne McBride into Southern Miss territory at the 42-yard line. I think this is the game he finally knocked that door open. His coaches were talking about it so close to knocking the door down. Well, he's over 100 yards now. There is a flag. I believe they picked it up. It looks like they picked it up playing football. UAB's offensive line getting it done. McBride getting to the second level on the outside edge in a hurry. This time hit immediately by Josh Carr Jr. Carr's done some good things. Feels like every time we're highlighting this Southern Miss defense, it's because of number 45. Even though they're getting worn down in the run game, have done a good job staying active, but like we're seeing right there, the, the UAB running attack. You mentioned Tyler Johnston to go back to him. I was intrigued what the game plan would be in the second half. Do you get Dylan Hopkins more reps to get comfort? Johnston's obviously a guy that's played a lot of fo football, but they're going to uh, make sure Hopkins is healthy moving forward. And Johnston threw that that's Mario good. Rudolph's good. way, but led him a little bit too much. Yeah, because I was curious about that, because if you're UAB, this is an opportunity to really get some rhythm and mojo as, as you look towards the rest of the season. You mentioned Dwayne McBride, this being the, the breakout, breakthrough performance. With Dylan Hopkins, I was a little surprised they aren't giving him the third quarter just to get even more rhythm moving into the back end of the season. On third down, it's a keeper for Johnston, and he spins for the first down. Looks like there could have been a little bit of a hold on the outside, but Johnson getting involved with his legs as well. Skill set pretty, pretty comparable. It looks like uh, in terms of you know Johnson being able to have a little bit of his run game as well. But we were loving up Josh Carr for getting involved in the run game. Well, there he gets involved a little bit too much, gets sucked into the box. Johnson makes him pay. Almost loses his helmet along the way. Better keep that on there. A UAB attacking this defense in multiple ways. Needed that extra spin to get the first down. 
Minimal yardage off the left side for Jermaine Brown Jr. Tyler Johnston. See number four all time on the UAB passing list behind Joe Webb. Almost 5,000 passing yards for Johnston. And uh, he's in the top five in passing touchdowns as well. Closing in on 40 touchdown passes for his career. Just a winner. And stands in to the pressure and throws a strike, but Trey Shopshire just couldn't bring that in. Maybe a little bit of an alligator arm situation there. Yeah, he had his guy there. He got past the defense, a too high safety structure, and just runs right past him. I feel like he could have had a better ball towards that back pylon, right? Instead of having it leap towards the inside, put it towards that back pylon, throw it all 40 yards or so. But back to that graphic, Johnson, it's, it's a lot of production to have as a backup quarterback. Coaches raved about his ability to support uh, Dylan Hopkins and no ego involved, gaining that extra year of COVID eligibility. Four for seven on third downs in this game. Another keeper for Johnston, this time not fooled. Eric Kitchen comes up with the play at the 35-yard line. Seeing the athleticism of the edge defenders for Southern Miss. Great job sinking down when the tackle goes to his left, getting involved in the backfield. Johnson pulls the rock and wishes he had that one back. And they're going to try a long field goal here with the wind from 52 yards out. Matt Quinn has a long of 48 this season. And that's uh, the long for his career. So this would be a career long. And how about it? Everything working for UAB today. 52-yard field goal for Matt Quinn. He's two for two on the day. Hit a, what a field move. goal to start the scoring. Use the win to his advantage. And UAB closing in on a win themselves. All UAB 34-0 here midway through the third quarter in the first game of our doubleheader today on Stadium coming up. Mountain West action from Albuquerque, Colorado State, and New Mexico. Watch that at watchstadium.com on the Stadium app. Stadium, welcome to the game. That one is at 7 Eastern time tonight. 
when we are done here. I have to check that out. I'm heading to uh, New Mexico here in a few weeks. Prep for that, uh, that matchup. Reese Burkhart, the kickoff specialist, after Matt Quinn just nailed a 52-yard field goal, career long, to give UAB a 34-0 lead. And a uh, fair catch by Cam Harrell in the end zone out to the 25-yard line. Frank Gore Jr. has really been bottled up here ever since that opening drive of the game. Yeah, he had some life on that first drive, and it's been impressive. The ability we, we talked about to shake off tacklers. It's, it's taken two, three Blazer defenders to get him down. But as the quarter wore on, especially as we got into the second quarter, the Blazers were really able to, to, to pin their ears back. And the thing that I'm most impressive of, impressed with, excuse me, is this front seven. I mean, they're so deep, especially at this level of football. You don't always see that. UAB is able to roll out a bunch of defensive linemen, some linebackers, stay active, stay healthy. They showed that today. A pass incomplete intended for Jacarius Caston. Southern Miss averaging just 1.7 yards per play on offense today. This is what's so hard if you're an offensive coordinator. You're Will Hall calling these plays. Quarterback that you don't have a ton of confidence in, hasn't necessarily been practicing all that well. Where do you go to on the playbook? And you go to number three, probably, but when you're down 34 points, it's hard to just continue to run the rock. But valuable reps for T. Webb, go through your progressions. Once you see live bullets, it makes practice a lot easier. We have the freshman getting his second drive here. Came out to start the second half, and that one's picked off. Kyle Harrell with the interception. And the UAB defense, which has turned it on the last few games, forces another turnover. I mentioned that depth in the activity. You had Will Bowler involved a little bit there in, in coverage, I believe. Noah Wilder, no, Noah Wilder puts his arm in there. A lot of Blazers getting active right there, and what a play. I mean, but we talked about it. If you're Southern Miss, T. Webb, that's exactly what you don't want to happen. This, you, you want his confidence to grow. You want him to feel a little bit better about what he's got going on. It's a quick read right there. It's a bang-bang play. Credit Noah Wilder for getting his arm in there. And if you're uh, Will Hall, not a ton of answers you can go to. You know, it's a good thing he's a positive guy because uh, as an offensive mind, it's got to be really tough for him to handle this kind of offensive ineptitude. It's TJ Jones for 11. And it's hard, too, because for Will Hall, it's a, it's a pro-style scheme in, in its true nature, meaning you need a quarterback to be able to drive the show, to do the deep ball play action shots, to drive the ball into those vacated zone versus on Bill Clark's side of things, yes, obviously every offense needs a quarterback to, to, to play well, but their offense is more conducive to hiding behind, a little bit behind a run game, lean on uh, a, a strong defense and whatnot. Southern Miss isn't built like that, and you're seeing that this year. Tyler Johnston looking to throw back, does, completes it. And that's another game with a catch for Hayden Pittman. They call him Sunshine. That's 32 straight games with a catch. There is a flag, though. It's a flag of the play. The result of the play is a completed catch. Personal foul, face pass, number 93, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Chris, we'll see how this game progresses. But Hayden Pittman might be thanking his backup quarterback, Tyler Johnson, for this. To keep the streak alive, starters might be sitting down soon. Hayden Pittman says, man, I got to make the most of every single catch I get, showing the athleticism there. This is an offense that really features both these tight ends. You lose some playmakers at the receiver position a year ago. They've leaned on these two tight ends in a big way. And now first and goal. And the handoff. Power running off the right side, but Southern Miss able to push him back. At the one-yard line. We'll see the fight in this Southern Miss defense right here. In the goal line, Hayden Pittman there. We've talked about both tight ends today. Garrett Prince and Hayden Pittman. He's the throwback tight end. He's the old school guy. 22 consecutive games at the reception. Getting it done in the pass game. Does a good job in the blocking combinations as well. UAB does a great job of utilizing their tight ends 
outside and then also bringing him into the core of the formation as well. Putting a lot of pressure on the defense. Prince had the first touchdown of the game. And that ball came out as he tried to reach it across the goal line. And Southern Miss says they have it. No signal yet from the officiating crew. But it looks like this is going to be a turnover and touchback. It is. So that Southern Miss defense, even though this is not going their way today, still fighting here in the third. Let's see. If that ball was ex no, I don't think so. I think that just came out. Not going their way, but finding a way. Looked like TQ Newsom getting his hat on the ball. And as a result of getting his hat on the ball, he came up with no helmet. But creating a turnover. We we're curious about that fight at Southern Miss and that overall belief system that they have. Obviously, today is not going their way, their way but no lack of fight. They are gonna look at that fumble to see if he was either down or maybe broke the plane before the ball came out. We haven't seen anything that uh, would show that he did. Yeah, Newsom right there, the linebacker position showing up. The ball just leaks out. Tough to see. It looks like he's up. That ball pops out before. It's hard to see what he's laying on. But given the call on the field, this will be a good angle. Yeah, that's Lucius Stanley. I, I don't see. I don't see any part of his body down or the ball over the plane. The question for me is, where's that right elbow? If once the left elbow extends, that's where the fumble happens. Depending on where that right elbow is. But given that the call on the field is a fumble. Pretty confident that this will uh, stay true. Now, nothing really has gone right since that first quarter for Southern Miss. But uh, baby steps here, building blocks as they look to rebuild this proud program. After review, the ruling on the field of a fumble recovered by the defense has been confirmed. It's a touchback. TQ Newsom coming up with a big play. The doctor, that's what we learned this week. Smartest guy on the defense, future, future doctor there for TQ, but better keep his helmet on or else I gotta protect that brain moving <laughs> forward. He wants to be an orthopedic surgeon, his mother and his godmother, both dentists. And TQ Newsom making a big play for the defense there. Keeping UAB out of the end zone and now what does the offense do for Will Hall? And our second quarterback of this game, T. Webb. We saw Jake Lang make his second start, played the entire first half, but was really nicked up at the end of the half, was limping all over the place. So they go with T. Webb. And an opportunity for T. Webb, you throw a pick, last possession. How do you respond? Where are you at mentally? We're going to go with some Wildcat here, give it a different wrinkle. Chandler Pittman's going to throw it up for grabs, and that might be pass interference. There is a jersey tug there from Starling Thomas. You can see Jason Brownlee back in the game after coming off earlier in this half. Pass interference, number four, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, I didn't see what happened, but Frank Gore Jr. coming up, hobbling in a big way. He was on the ground for a minute there. I'm sure he got involved in pass protection. Not sure if he took a lick or, or whatnot, but obviously not a good sign. Now, lately, Southern Miss has only been able to pick up first downs on Penalties. They had a roughing the passer penalty last drive that gave him a first down and now pass interference penalty as Deshaun Richard runs that one for six. I really like Richard. They say talented, can run the ball for sure, but he just hasn't seen the field a lot because 
they don't quite trust him in pass protection. He's given up a, a couple of big sacks. Pittman again, Wildcat. Straight ahead for a couple more. Yeah, that whole pass protection thing for young running backs is always a, a key element. I remember when I was uh, at USC, we had a run, young running back, Ronald Jones, who's now uh, with Mr. Brady over there in, in Tampa Bay. He struggled to, to pass protect as, as a youngster, but then grew into that. And then ironically now for the Bucks, Tom Brady, that's not a guy that's taking any running back that can't pass protect, not at, not at his age. So cool to see the growth there. And every young running back, it's always a key factor. Ooh, that snap came right as Demarcus Jones was in front of the Wildcat quarterback Chandler Pittman, who was able to still make the catch and pick up the first down at midfield. There's some John there between TD Marshall and Jason Brown. They looked like Marshall was letting them know the score, and in a rivalry game like this, not a ton Brownlee can say. That has been a bummer for a guy like Jason Brownlee. He's a great receiver but a byproduct of the quarterback injuries and whatnot for not uh, not being able to, pr to produce like, uh, like you know he can. And Pittman again. And that's it's been the best thing at quarterback today for Southern Miss as we get uh, a bunch of late flags here and some shoving that went too far after the whistle. Jerquan Scott. Standing up for his buddy. And as a result, he's going to pay the price. Uh, see the sideline. Didn't like the little extra emphasis that the UAB had on that Wildcat run. It's a tough break. If you're Will Hall, you got to like the fight. Can't do that. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 65, offense, his first of the game. 15 yard penalty, the down counts, second down. Right there, we're seeing Pittman, nice hard run there at a Wildcat, and then the extra emphasis there, Jalen Key showing up, and then his buddy, Jerquan Squat, saying, man, I've had enough of that. Will Hall not pleased, though. So now, second down and 17 after the penalty as Frank Gore, beg your pardon, that's uh, Dejan Richard once again up the middle. Dejan Richard. The third down and nine. And they're sticking with uh, Chandler Pittman at quarterback. I believe that he makes six different quarterbacks this season for Southern Miss who have thrown a pass. Yeah, that's, that's not winning football. and. This is only the second time they've reached past the midfield point. The first time was on the first drive of the game. Been a struggle since then, but... UAB will take their first time out of the half. Time out on the field. UAB calls a timeout with 3.15 to go here in the third quarter. And a 34-0 lead. A third down and nine coming up on the other side.
sun setting here on a beautiful day in Hattiesburg, Southern Mississippi, trailing 34 0. Thank you for voting for the fan of the game. You chose number two. It looks like he knew he was going to oh, win. That's your guy. Yeah, love the hat. Love the beard. Love the vibe. Love the shades. Oh, he's got, that guy's got it going on. Thanks. What is that on his shirt? He got uh, zebras on his shirt. Fan of the game, big big ref guy. <laughs> <laughs> on third down and nine, Chandler Pittman again, the wide receiver taking the quarterback snap. It's uh, something they've done pretty much this entire drive. And on fourth down, the punt team is on. I mean, what do you do at this point if you're Will Hall? I mean, you got you, Jake Lang, your starting quarterback today, was number four on the depth chart coming in, a walk-on true freshman. He gets banged up. T. Webb, we've seen him come in, hasn't had much of a chance at all. How do you, how do you yeah, stay they, positive, <laughs> honestly? I mean, I, I don't know how he does it. I guess when we were asking him about that this week, he said, look, we feel great about the culture of this program, the recruiting that we've put in. We're turning this baby around, just not seeing the results on the field as of right now. Will Hall, in his first season, looks like he's going to fall to one and six. Really cool piece of artwork on campus here. That is Hattiesburg native Osceola McCarty. And uh, as a little girl, she wanted to be a nurse, but had to leave school in sixth grade to take care of her sick aunt. Never made it back to the classroom. Took on uh, odd jobs. I mean, laundry, ironing jobs for the next 75 years. Recently passed away and left $150,000 of her savings, basically all of it, for the University of Southern Mississippi, a scholarship wow. fund for children in need. It's awesome. Uh, penalty marker down here. Holding, number three, offense, half the distance to the goal. First down. Holding penalty called on the wide receiver Rajay Johnson Sanders. He's a guy that jumped out to me on film. I mean, 6'4, 215. He's big. And man, he can run. And when you're that size, getting involved in the pass or the, the running blocking game as well. Safeties for Southern Miss showing up in the run game, laying some big licks today. Well, a good start to this game. Held UAB to just three points in the first quarter. 
It was 3-0 after one, but then UAB dominated the second quarter with four touchdowns, including a block punt that was recovered for a touchdown. Malik Short's making a tackle on that play as well, getting involved. Down. And Chris, you asked about in terms of how do you stay positive and whatnot. The defensive leader, Shorts, offensive leader, Frank Gore, making sure those guys stay positive and show the example for the young guys goes a long way with a lot of season left. Straight up the middle on second down to set up a third and short. Starting offensive line still in there. Third and short, lean on that big back. 14 carries, 131 yards for Dwayne McBride, including a 37-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. Best game of the season for McBride. On third down in the final minute of the third, Johnston gets it batted away. Eric Scott Jr. had a free run. Got those hands up, and it'll be fourth down. Great job there by Scott Jr. on a little corner blitz. Scouting reports on him is a big physical corner. Will they give him the green light to go ahead and blitz? Gets his hands up. But impressed, I mean, obviously it's been a tough day for Southern Miss defensively, but their pressure packages of anything that's had success, success that's certainly, we saw a little bit of that in the first, uh, first quarter right there showing up. Credit this defense for mixing things up. They're at least trying to create some havoc. Come after that punt. And that one's muffed. But falling on it was Daquan Bailey Brown. And Southern Miss has it at the 39 yard line. Dwayne McBride. They were waiting for him to have a big day. Finally got one. Finally got one, and Chris, last time we were together, it was the Spencer Brown show. Well, Dwayne McBride, I think, a few years from now, they're hoping that he, you know, is in a similar mold to that. I know that's a high standard to set, but McBride showing the physicality, showing the ability to break away in open space. Just shrugging off tacklers by Southern Miss. They love this guy, they're excited about this guy, and as the season moves on, being able to wear teams out in the run game has got to be part of U, uh, UAB's DNA. Final 25 seconds of the third. Deshaun Richard twisted down at the 45-yard line by Jalen Key. Will likely be the final play of the quarter. UAB trying to pitch another shutout. They shut out Jacksonville State to start the season. Bill Clark's alma mater was a really big win for Coach Clark and the team. But their best defensive performance was last week in a 31-14 win against FAU. And they are doing it again today. One quarter away from a shutout. Torturing those Southern Miss freshman quarterbacks. UAB up huge.
know, UAB said uh, they had not forgotten about the last time they played Southern Miss two years ago on this field. They lost 37 to 2. A complete reversal this time around of 34 nothing here to start the fourth quarter. They're sending a message for sure. Oh, how the, the tides have turned. Only two short years. We've talked about it tonight. Programs in completely different landscapes, but credit Bill Clark's uh, team for not laying off the gas. UAB going for a four-peat in the division. They've won three straight West Division titles and going to get to 3-0. and oh. Boy, that play was blown up from the start. Jacarius Kasten lost a bunch back behind the original line of scrimmage. They're lucky that one didn't end up as a turnover. Yeah, there was a lot of movement in the backfield, but the bad thing is it was not only Southern Miss movement, it was UAB movement as well. Seeing four Blazers right there, sniffing out that reverse before it could ever get started. Macario Stanley made the stop. And it's now third down and 12. And the quarterback is T. Webb, who started the second half for Southern Miss. If you're just joining us, Jake Lang started this game, but got banged up a little bit. Nice. Pass complete to Demarcus Jones. Going to be about three yards shy of a first down. Another flag just thrown. You got to tell this game's getting chippy. To Marcus Jones on the catch right there. We talked about it. they have receivers that can play. Good job by T. Webb getting the ball of his hands. Sorting out the, the penalty here. Scott Harden once again our referee. After the play, personal foul, number 51, offense, 15 yard penalty, the down will count, fourth down. All right, so now you're definitely not going to try to go for it after the penalty. Also see Jake Lang was getting in there a little bit in the uh, USM huddle, still limping around. Guys chirping. A little extra shove. Just can't do it. Easier said than done. Bending those emotions, you're getting blown out. Just can't do it. You see it a lot in games like this. A fair catch was called by Starling Thomas, or so the officials say. Thirty-four nothing UAB with the football.
much left to decide here on the field, but but you have something to decide at home. Who's going to be our player of the game? Dwayne McBride is one of the options for UAB. 14 carries, 125 yards, and a touchdown. Dylan Hopkins, the other option. He was 8 for 13, only played in the first half. 147 passing yards, one passing touchdown. Also had one rushing touchdown. And get the QR code up there for you. You can scan that and vote for the player of the game. And we'll get you the results a little bit later in the quarter. Great job right there by Cam Harrell triggering. UAB tries to throw a little bubble screen right there. Says not having any of that. Plays that star position for Southern Miss. It's a position I find myself seeing more and more on defensive depth charts. It started in more of the Nick Saban era. has been trickled down in the new school of football of rather than having a third linebacker, it's a you know linebacker, defensive back, hybrid. You're asked to blitz more than a true nickel is, but Cam Harrell is man in that posi uh, position for the Golden Eagles. Bride. Here's that QR code to vote for our player of the game. Just uh, use your phone, scan that like you would a menu at a restaurant. It'll take you to the website and vote for either Dwayne McBride or his quarterback, Dylan Hopkins. And again, Hopkins has not played in the second half. Tyler Johnston, the third, has had all the snaps at quarterback in the second half. We think it's just because the game is uh, out of reach. It was 31 nothing at halftime. McBride still running hard, picking up the first down for the Blazers. That's impressive. He is just truck sticks. Hayes Maples on Southern Miss ends, and Hayes is all-conference player, but it shows how good Dwayne McBride is. I think any, any linebacker would have problem bringing down number 22 one-on-one, -on -one. but I, just, I think back at this game, the big plays early on. UAB has some, especially in the pass game. Southern Miss not able to get anything going in the pass game, and that amongst many factors has been the story of the game. This time a play made in the backfield. And that was a big old kitchen, Eric Kitchen, 6-2. About three bills out of Batesville, Mississippi. When we look at a kitchen, we've talked about Carr today, you like Sykes in the middle. There are some pieces there going into this game. This was a defense that was playing solid and it just throughout the course of the season, when you get into the second half, they get worn down a little bit. But when you talk about the rebuild effort, some of those pieces on the defensive line you like, utilize the transfer portal in uh, this off season to boost them up even more. And that can't be easy for the defense to know that they're fighting an uphill battle before they even take the field with an offense that today only has mustered 97 Ray yards Ray for Southern Miss. Yard they have to play near perfect against a team like UAB to, to stay in this game. They did have some opportunities, though. Those first couple drives, yeah, we looked at each other and we said, man, the, the pick that we were thinking could have been pick six, and you had a great first drive offensively, but then when you don't cash in on that, we started to look at each other and say, man, they might regret that, or look back and, and say, hey, we paid the price there. Well, you know the defense is saying the same thing. If the second this offense shows life, they're not able to capitalize. That's awfully tough. And Johnston, oh, dangerous pass. Batted away by the linebacker Josh Carr, Jr., who's been really active. We've called his name, I don't know, seven or eight times. Looks like a little wounded duck out there. And the Carr, a little gimpy himself, swatted that away with the left hand. Yeah, we've seen Carr in the pass rush game right there. Not only has it, does he have that defensive end mold, he's got the outside linebacker mold as well, dropping into coverage. A little comeback on the outside by UAB. He drops underneath that, gets a little pass breakup, and 45, having a nice little game. And a fair catch just inside the 20-yard line by Daquan Bailey-Brown. 10-0-1 to go in this game. It's 34-0 UAB trying to preserve their second shutout of the season.
some Southern Miss students sticking it out here till the end. 10-0-1 to go. They have not seen a point yet from their Golden Eagles. Coming up next, right here on Stadium, Mountain West action, Colorado State at New Mexico. 7 Eastern time kickoff for that one. UAB used a huge second quarter to blow this game open. Outing, outscored Southern Miss 28-0 in that second quarter. And that pass way behind the intended receiver. Daquan Bailey Brown. There's a flag in the backfield. Okay. Foul. Roughing the passer. Number 10. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Tyree Turner called for roughing the passer. Again, that's one of the few ways Southern Miss has been able to pick up first downs in this game. Just 97 total yards. But that's the eighth penalty on UAB for 75 yards. And really. That's one of the things that stands out when you look at the UAB numbers this season. They're, they're averaging 90 penalty yards a game. That's bottom five in the country. We talked to the coaches about that this week, and David Reeves, their defensive coordinator, said, hey, we're really not that concerned about the penalties because we preach play and hard and play in two and sometimes through the whistle. So it's our style of play. And you just have to live with the penalties sometimes. I thought his answer was refreshing. I mean, usually it's, oh, that's something we got to correct, got to tighten that up. He owned it and said, you know what, I got it. Like you said, no problem with it. If our guys are playing fast, playing hard, if that means we're a little bit more penalized, I'm good with that. If that means uh, the edge of our defense is coming to play every week. Second down, 11. A couple receivers there in the vicinity. Neither one of them got it. And that's a good example, too, of the growth as well. Right there, you have a little stick concept at the bottom of the screen or a, a hitch to the very bottom. But to the top, you have one-on-one -on -one matchup, your best receiver, Jason Brownlee. That's got to be where you feel like you can win. Not only do you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you got Brownlee going vertical. I would have given him a shot. Give, your, give, your, give yourself a chance to make a big play with, uh, with number one single man-to-man -man, uh, up there. Third down, 11. Again, same play. This time it's snatched out of the air by Bailey Brown. It's still well short of the first down. They just uh, haven't had any success through the air. Six of 16 passing for right about 30 yards. It's just so hard right there. You get a third and long. It's about all you can do. Get the ball to your quarterback's hand so quickly because he, if he holds onto it any bit longer, this UAB passing uh, pass rush is right on top of him. Well, UAB said they had to get better on third downs. That was one of the things David Reeves talked about this week. Third downs this season, giving up a 39% success rate. But in this game, Southern Miss just three for 13 on third down. Bill Clark's team has a 34 nothing lead.
close this thing out, and you know uh, when it gets this close, they're looking for that shutout. They they shut out Jacksonville State to start the season, and uh, well, from the word go here, it's been all UAB defense teeing off on these young freshman quarterbacks with very little experience. Exactly. From the very first whistle, they've been getting it done, getting after the passer and stopping the run. That's what any defense wants to do, and that's what UAD, UAB does at a high level. And today, they've showcased that in full fledged. Not only stop the run and get after the passer, but create some turnovers as well. Living in the backfield, being the aggressor on defense. That's what UAB has done in years past, and they laid it on uh, Southern Miss today. And we still don't know uh, exactly why Tyler Johnston, the third, has played this entire second half for Dylan Hopkins. Boy, that was an interesting exchange there with an official getting in between a couple of players. Dylan Hopkins played the whole first half. We saw Johnston come out to start the second half. We don't know at this point if uh, if it's uh, injury related or if if Johnston just came out because it was 31-0. Yeah, in my experience, usually that's something you do when you have a younger backup quarterback, not a backup quarterback who's fourth all time in the school in terms of uh, yards and whatnot. Just, I mean, usually it's to, you know, get a young guy experience in a game that you know you have in hand. But they love Dylan Hopkins. They know he's their guy. Moving forward, got to keep him upright and healthy. So they gave the uh, the veteran the, the second half of this game. Now UAB is going to improve 30 second timeout. to 20 and three against division opponents since the start of the 2017 season. That's getting it done. It just dominance as they go for their fourth consecutive West Division Championship. Bill Clark was saying it's probably the toughest schedule they've ever had when you factor in the non-conference games against his alma mater, Jacksonville State. They had to go to Georgia, number one team in the country right now. They went to Tulane, won that game, hosted Liberty, a game that was tied at halftime, and then Liberty. Able to pull Malik away Willis, half, Superman, man. yeah. No, a tough, tough schedule for sure, and not to mention playing the uh, Boys from Athens as well. Georgia's no uh, no easy contest, but yeah, outside of that Liberty game, when you run into Malik Willis, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, UAB doing some good things. Please adjust the game clock to seven minutes and 16 seconds. And just It'll opened their the new snap. stadium for that Liberty game a couple of weeks ago, protective stadium. 37,000 there for the first game. Lost to Liberty, but then came back, beat FAU in front of about 25,000 last week. 22 and two at home since the start of the 17 season. And a good run, A.J. Gates. His first big carry for UAB. Just two touches all season before that one. A good vision here by Gates. And this has been a common theme today. Southern Miss over pursuing a little bit and the UAB running backs running against the grain, stepping back. See Johnston, he, he outran the running back and threw a big block of his own. Wow. He knows he's only got uh, so many plays left in him, so much for quarterback sliding and whatnot, getting involved, love to see it. And in a 34-0 game, no less. Taking that play clock down. This time it's a TFL for Josh Carr Jr. Let's go back to that block from Tyler Johnston who comes screaming out of there. He's like he's swimming there. Threw down Natron Brooks, the cornerback, and he, he had his teammates fired up there. He said, uh, Hayden Pittman. And Pittman's all juiced up. We were wondering why Dylan Hopkins wasn't playing in the in the second half. Maybe it's for reasons like that. You don't want your quarterback to do something, do something silly. But when you're the backup, you're the veteran. You can do that. It's all good if uh, you get involved in the run game. Love that. Next up for UAB, they host Rice. Homecoming game next week, and then a, a much needed bye week. An interesting stretch for UAB. The Rice 
And like you talked about the bye week, I mean, it feels like every coach we talked to on their staff was had mentioned the bye week. We could use the open week. We could use the open week. But then after that week, you have a stretch of the UTEP and the UTSA. Marshall, Louisiana Learn Tech. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's it's the, the money stretch. Of yep. the CUSA schedule after that bye. Speaking of buys, or idols, if you will, Southern Miss, idol next week. We talk about needed. And maybe hit the waiver wire for some more quarterbacks on campus. You see if Brett Favre's training anyone in the area on the side or something like that with eligibility. <laughs> It'll be a test, though, for, for Coach Hall to keep the morale up. Going to the bye week, sometimes it's good when you get blown out like this because you can get the bad bad taste out of your mouth the very next week. Well, when you go to a bye. Holding. Defense, number three. 10-yard penalty from the end of the play. Results in a first down. When you go to a bye, you can, can be the opposite effect, too, and lose some mojo as well. And this is the standings. UAB is going to head to 3-0 and in conference play. UTSA also 2-0 uh, and in conference play. And UTSA and UTEP playing uh, not each other, but later on tonight. So we could have three teams at 3-0 and by the time this night is done in the division. But uh, La Tech and Rice going to have something to say about that. Yeah, my former offensive coordinator, Marcus Tuiasasopo, he's the offensive coordinator at Rice. We're looking at this film saying, man, we can we can score some points. Don't, don't sleep on that team. And uh, yet another quarterback into the game. This is Bryson Lacero, another guy who UAB fans have seen. Played seven games last season. This is the guy I'm used to prepping for. We saw him all uh, the whole game. For, for a good chunk of the game, excuse me, against uh, La Tech last year. Mm -hmm. That's Lucius Stanley. I think it's wrapped up. Strong tackle from Avery Habas. And Will Hall has to be buzzing up into his headset saying, man, I would, I would take a Bryson Lucero at this point in, the, in this season. You would be having the luxury of three quarterbacks on their rosters that have experience, have won games, have been productive. So they're miss on the other hand, just trying to piece it all together. 6'1", 215, redshirt sophomore. Be interesting to see how this whole eligibility backlog affects all teams in college football as the years come, with everyone getting a bonus year of, of COVID and whatnot. We saw it on UAB's front with Tyler Johnston coming back. They thought Dylan Hopkins was this was going to be his time, and it is now, but had to beat out the old guy to get there. And they faked the handoff, and Lucero keeps it. For Southern Miss, after the bye week, they go to Middle Tennessee on Saturday, October 30th, a couple weeks, then North Texas. This is a really young team. They have the 11th fewest seniors in the country with 12. 23 underclassmen on their two deep. And Will Hall said it was all about uh, doing the doing the easy things right this week. Things that you can control. Don't need to hit that three run homer. Well, they be a no hit right now. Yeah, <laughs> not even a single to show for it. Yeah, he said you wouldn't know it was a 1-5 team if you walked into practice. The mojo's there, energy's still there, and that'll be key moving forward is how does Will Hall continue to keep that energy, that, that mojo? He's a positive guy. That jumps off right. The, the first sentence he says when we went into his coach's interviews, he's a positive guy, but with where this rebuild's at, making sure that you go into, you know, December and whatnot, feeling good about the trajectory of your program this, this next Five or six weeks will be uh, be crucial. And this punt gonna land inside the five and just go into the end zone. And we'll take our final break here. 137 to go. Will Hall trying to 
get to the finish line, maybe with uh, some late points. It's 34 nothing UAB, but uh, how about an uplifting story here for number six, Dejon Richard, the redshirt freshman out of Patterson, Louisiana. Got a great bond with his young cousin, Samuel Blair, who at the age of two was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. And great to report that the little guy is now growing into a big guy. Just celebrated his seventh birthday, did Samuel and he has been declared cancer free. Where's that number six for his cousin? Because that's the number he wore in high school when he got the news that his cousin had that cancer and a bunch of rounds of chemotherapy, a tumor removed from his stomach. And boy, just great to hear that not only the bond that they have, but that things are looking great for Samuel, cancer free and celebrating that seventh birthday back in June. And he's now playing recreational sports. And Here we go. He's, he's going to wear number six, just like uh, his big cousin. Love that. Hopefully he can do uh, some juke moves as well, like his big cousin that we saw right there. Now, awesome story. False start. Number 51, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Uh, UAB, or excuse me, uh, Southern Miss has not been shut out since 2014. It was the season opener against Mississippi State. They lost 49-0. But it is heading that way today. Obviously can't forget about the circumstances, though. They've lost their top two quarterbacks for the season. Had to start a true freshman walk-on quarterback today in Jake Lang. They felt like he was their best option, and he gets banged up in the first half. So T. Webb has played quarterback for most of the second half. They even had Chandler Pittman, the wide receiver, take a bunch of snaps at quarterback out of the Wildcat. And right there, Kaibo Jamerson getting in there for a big tackle. UAB sideline getting fired up. Allowing some of these third, fourth string guys to make some plays. And that should be the final play of the game. And a second shutout of the season for the UAB Blazers. Dwayne McBride, the big game on offense for UAB. 17 carries, 137 yards, and that 37-yard touchdown run. the player of the game is voted on 
called by you, the fan and viewer. They were waiting for it. And they thought he was going to win the starting running back job and, and run away with it in the offseason. Didn't happen. Jermaine Brown Jr. won it. And Jermaine Brown Jr. started this game, but McBride made the most of every opportunity. I love this back. He really, uh, I love his physicality in terms of wearing that, that defense down and don't sleep on his athleticism as well. And we only saw Dylan Hopkins for one half, but he showed out well. Like the way he's able to use his legs, got it, got the ball out of his hands. But still, the DNA of this offense is behind Dwayne McBride. Use that play action to get these tight ends and receivers involved. We saw one catch by Trey Shopshire as well. Bill Clark's got to like where his roster's at. Wants to make sure they can get into that bye week a little bit from here, healthy and whatnot. But this is a uh, championship caliber team with that running game and that defense. And now the first Conference USA team to 3 and 0 this season. And Max, 20 and 3 against division opponents since the start of 2017. That's getting it done. That's getting it done. Will Hall said that Bill Clark's done it the right way with the rebuild. Well, the rebuild's in the rearview mirror for UAB. That record showing that they're taking care of business on uh, the west side of Conference USA. Garrett Prince scored the first touchdown of the game, a 34-yarder. The biggest play in the game, the blocked punt by Grayson Cash. And he recovered it for a touchdown, his second straight week with a touchdown after the 100-yard pick six last week. And those fans who made the three-hour or so trek from Birmingham, along with the band and cheerleaders, are going to be heading home happy. Will Hall and Southern Miss fall to one and six on the season. UAB to five and two overall and 3-0 in conference play with a date with Rice at home next week. For Max Brown, our producer Russ Winham, our director John Claybrook, and our entire stadium crew, I'm Chris Hassel, saying so long from Southern Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where UAB pitches a 34-0 shutout.